Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my channel, Handmade by Ying with Donna. Today is November the 16th, 2022, and it's 10.02 a.m., and we're here today for a fun, fast sew, and it's a cool project. Sew along with me if you'd like, and if not, catch the replay and circle back to it. Everybody needs one of these. If you don't have one, like I said, it's a fun, fast, easy sew. I saw it on Facebook last night. You tweak the directions however you need to to accommodate your needs. So I'll wait on a few people to hop into the chat and then we'll get this party started. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and give you a few little bits of spill the tea. 12 amazing content creators has gotten together and we're working on an amazing project called the 12 Days of Quiltmas. With that being said, I'm going to drop all of their names in their channels with the channels, what I need from you as my subscribers is to slip over to each and every one of these channels and give them a look, see. See if you're interested in their content, subscribe. But over a 12-day period, you're going to need to slip over to these channels because I'm telling you what, there's amazing content that's going to come out December the 1st through December the 12th. With that being said, I'm going to drop all of the names of the channels right now. So grab yourself a pen, write these channels down, and you're going to thank me later. First and foremost, the very first one is Tracy over at the Sewing Channel. She's got amazing content that comes out weekly, if not daily. So she's going to be the first one out of the box on our 12 Days of Quiltmas. Then you're going to want to check out Tiffany of Tiffany's Quilting Life. Now, how amazing is this? The list just keeps getting better and better. We've got Kristen over at I See Stars, April at April Story, Becca, it's so Becca, Die of Sister Chicks, Ian, the off kilter crafter, Chris, So the Distance, Fallon, it's so be it quilts. My channel will be on the 10th, Teresa Louise at Teresa Louise, I quilt too. And we're going to wrap it up on the 12th with Tucker over at Tucker Sewing and Quilting. So what a mouthful. And I'm telling you what, it's an honor and a privilege for my channel to be included into this. And it's going to be off the hook amazing. You're not going to want to miss. So please, please check out each and every one of these channels because there's greatness coming. And at the end, over the next couple of weeks, as we're building up the momentum for this, you are definitely going to want to stay tuned and check out each channel. I did put them in the order of the days that they're going to um, have their video roll out. You're going to want to check out each and every video. Ugly Fabric was mailed out to all of us. We each got the opportunity to pick out what we felt was the ugliest fabric that we could find on the market. Then we mailed it to everybody. Everybody came together and they got to pick out what they could do, either make a beautiful quilt, a um, ugly quilt with said ugly fabric. I'm telling you what, it's crazy how fast this is rolling out. And being on the back end, it's fun to see what everybody's coming up with on their content alone. I haven't had the opportunity to get a bird's eye view at everybody's, but um, I'm telling you what, it's going to be fun. So Tracy of the Sewing Channel, welcome to the chat, my love. Um, Katie D. Crafts, good morning, sweetheart. So today I've dropped a lot of information and over the next couple weeks, you're going to check out all of these channels and you're going to be blessed by doing so. Um, it's really important that every day in that for December the 1st through the December the 12th, you check out the videos that's portrayed on these channels that's rolling out. I'm not going to drop all the tea today, but over the next two weeks, you're going to have a lot of content that's going to be rolling out. Little tidbits, little teasers, little spill the teas. Some of them's going to come out with full blown, whoa, this is what we're doing. So you got to check out all the little videos and it means everything to all of us. Hello, Brenda Foley, and welcome to the chat today. So this is a very, very spontaneous live today, but I was lurking on Facebook last night and giving it a go. And my presser, my 
foot pedal is always one that slides all over. And it, I feel like I'm kind of chasing my pedal. I don't know if anybody else has that problem. I've talked to Courtney and several others, and it seems to be something that we all deal with. So I saw this cool little hack last night, and I would be remiss if I didn't try to make it on my own and share that with you. Now, how cool is that? So it's really fast, simple, and easy to do. So all you need to do is measure your presser foot, your presser pad. Mine is six inches this way by three inches this way. You're going to add two inches in each direction. And that's where the math comes in. And so if you like math, you're in the right place today. So I've done, I've done it down with a lot of quick math. So like I said, mine is three foot this, three inches this way. And the length of mine is six. So I'm going to widen mine up a bit. So it's not sliding all over the place. Hello, Sandra Kay and hello, Shirley, and welcome. Today, I have Courtney in the chat. Joe's going to be on the back end switching cameras. And Courtney's going to be dropping the links for everybody that's involved in the 12 Days of Quiltmas for me. Please make sure that you do check out each and every channel. So today, it's a quick, simple sew. You need a roller. That way you can measure. What girl doesn't have a ruler, right? There is a little tiny bit, six inches of a whip stitch to close out one seam. So yes, there is a tiny, tiny little bit of hand sewing, something you can do in 30 seconds or less. You need one little piece of batting and mine is cut um, four and a half by four and a half. Then you're gonna have a six and a half by six and a half piece. And that's, this piece will lay in here and I'm gonna show you why in a minute. You're also gonna need paper. Anytime that you're working with the shelf liner, it gets caught up under your machine. So you're gonna act like, kind of like this here paper. It's gonna be rippable. You're gonna just tear it right off, but you're gonna lay it in so it's not catching on your machine. So it's gonna be really simple. You're gonna need your binding clips. I'm choosing to use fabric to decorate mine up on, on the underneath, but you don't need to. And I'm just going to fold mine in half where I need mine to be. Then you've got your shelf liner. You're going to need two pieces cut the same length. I cut mine five and a half by 10 because you want it to be a little bit longer for what we're going to be doing. So basically, it's not even a fat quarter you're gonna to have to make some quick binding. And I've already done, I've just sewed it together. I haven't worked it up yet. And um, I hope everybody's having a fabulous hump day. Best day of the week, we're halfway to the weekend. So let me get this cut up and then I'll press it in and I'll show you how the magic comes together. It is unbelievable how fast this little project comes to life. And it kind of takes on a life of its own. Really simple. So you grab your iron. Let me move everything out of its way. Grab my pressing station. And we're gonna make quick binding. You don't need all of this, but I just went ahead and did the full strip to make it simple. And we're just gonna press it in. If anybody has any questions right now about the 12 days of Quiltmas, feel free to ask. Renee Brown, hello everyone. Amy, hello sweetheart and welcome. And I'm gonna press this down and just keep this going. So just do your binding just as you would any other binding when you're pressing this out. Courtney, thank you honey for working the chat today for me. I greatly appreciate the extra hands. And there's no rhyme or reason to how fast you go on this or how simple, but I'm telling you, you will, you will thank me in the end at how quick this comes together. And this definitely was a free pattern on Facebook and you can look it up by the picture or the name and it'll come together. Courtney, are you a little cold? Yes. Her shop hasn't warmed up enough yet. Good morning, quilting queen, and welcome. 
when so it like gets cold and at night below 20, it stays really cold in here, even though I have a heater run. And that's okay as long as you're warm, babe. We'll have to get you some of those um, zip up yeah, pajamas. Buying me another heater. So. Yeah. So we've got our binding made up. And like I said, we're not going to need all this by any means. So I've made my ruler. We've measured everything out. And here's where the magic happens. You're going to take both pieces. And it might sound a little silly to use too, but there's a reason. You're going to take this little section and you're going to fold it up. And all you're doing right here is giving yourself a little buffer. And then you're going to lay it here. And then you're going to fold it over. And you're going to bring it up the back end of it. And you're making yourself a little, just a tiny little decoration per se. I'm going to use a clip as I'm getting this started, just so it doesn't move around for me. And I'm going to start binding it all the way around. So you can start your binding wherever you want. You can do it on the back or you can do it on the front. Let me do it on the back. That way it'll come up easier for us. And it, you're going to do this just like you do your quilt. And you've got your paper here. And I'll show you what we're going to be doing with that here in just a second. And it's going to be really simple and it's going to tear right off. You're just going to make sure you keep everything lined up as you're going around. You're going to do your corner just like you normally would. And you're going to press it and fold it back. If you have one of those fancy rulers that cut it off and do all the mitered, feel free to use them. I don't do those. I have one someone blessed me with, but I'm just going to keep it simple. And like I said, this is a fast, simple, easy sew. I'm trying to look at this. Good morning, Fallon, and welcome, June. Good morning, Sandra Kay. I've already told her hello. I'm looking up just a little bit. This is going to be, I thought I had my phone on vibrate and for that, I am sorry guys, now it is. So you're just gonna, just like you're buying in a quilt, you're just gonna wrap this all the way around the shelf liner. And this is gonna turn out so stinking adorable. And we're up to the end and you're going to come right back down again. And then you're going to do your, this is your two and a half inch. So you're just going to measure just as if you were doing your quilt binding. You're going to come to your bottom section here and you're going to measure your two and a half inches. So right here's my two and a half. So I'm going to put myself a little line there just so it's marked up. And I'm going to snip it off right there. And like I said, I'm going to have enough to make two because I have two machines. Get this baby turned on and I'll show you this quick, simple step. You're going to join this together. You're going to put it belly down. You're going to fold this up so it's out of the way. And then you're going to do it just like you do your regular binding. There's a little bit of rolling on this because I made it tight. Let's pop that one out to give me a little bit more room here. And I would highly recommend right here where you're joining it, it's, you're going to see the cross in the center. I always pin there. Some people don't. I choose to pin because I want it to come out straight. So I, I pin on both sides. I'm laying it down and zipping it right in. Zip these out, snip it off. And then you're just going to have to repin those couple that needed to come out. Lay it flat because it's going to wiggle just a tiny little bit. And 
and I want it to look cute when I turn it over. So I'm gonna pay a little bit of extra attention right there. And I'm gonna flip it back over because this here slips on me. So I just wanna make sure it's lined up, loosen it up just a smidge. And then I'm gonna hook this one. Now, anytime that you're working with anything that's non-skid, the little tidbit is you're just gonna lay this down on both sides. You're gonna sew over it, but it's gonna tear off just like if you were paper piecing. Then you're gonna put it on the back end as well. So you're just gonna lay it down kind of like a little quilt sandwich. And you, you're just gonna sew on your binding and this is gonna keep it from slipping. I don't wanna do it on this side yet. So when I flip it over, I'm gonna need it on this side. And that was their little hack. So you're actually sewing the paper on, but it's okay, it's gonna come right off really simple. Sandra Kay says, when I go home, I will be tired of chasing my foot pedal. Yeah, this here is, I don't like to chase mine and I believe all of us do from time to time. And this is supposed to be a good game changer that we're gonna put it to the test today. And I love how the tidbit of putting the paper under it when you're sewing this in, I love it. Because now everything's not catching and it's not pulling all over the place. Ellen says, I want to make one. My pedal always run away from me. I think all of us women chase a pedal. There's all kinds of little hacks out there. You can put this um, shelf liner to the bottom. You can hook it with gum bands. Quick, easy little tips. But what girl doesn't like a little cuteness in the sewing room as well? And like I said, this is a fast, easy sew. And if you've got a quilter in your life that you dearly love and you see them struggling with their foot pedal, why not fix it? Fix it and mail it to them. Give them a little blessing for the holidays. And then Amy says, I'll be making one for sure. I hate chasing my pedal. I didn't hear you, babe, the machine. Amy says, I will be making one for sure. I hate chasing my pedal. Absolutely. I think we all do. And I think I'm going to make one for my mother-in-law. It's a quick, easy sew, a perfect stocking stuffer. So I've went all the way around now. And I'm just going to flip it over. And as you can see, the paper's here. So you're just going to honestly tear it off. Kind of like therapeutic, I guess. It's going <laughs> to come off really simple. And nothing's stuck. And it looks really neat and cleaned up. So it's just like I said, it's kind of like FPP on a foot pedal, but I didn't have to fight with any of it. And it's pre-cut. You cut it the same size as you do your shelf liner. And no fuss, no muss. So we've got that far. You can choose to snip your corners or you can leave them in. I'm, I'm not going to snip them until I assess my corners to see how they're going to come out. So now you're just going to fold it over and tuck your corners just as if you were building a quilt. And you're going to come all the way around and just tuck your corners. And it comes in really neat. Now you're going to have this whole back section here that's going to slide. So you're going to do the paper trick again. So you're just going to tuck your little seams and you're going to pull this in and you're going to do just as you would with your regular quilting. You're just going to put your paper there and you're going to start clipping all the way around. I'm going to give it a simple clip and then I'll come back and make sure the paper's exactly where I want it. It's 
great Christmas ideas. Morning, all. Oh, this is a great idea. I just, I saw it on Facebook last night. It is a free pattern, but the gist of it is it's a fast, easy, simple sew. And what girl doesn't like easy at Christmas? We're all inundated and these make perfect stocking stuffer ideas. And I love it. And they're cute as well. What girl doesn't like cute, right? You can do them to match your sewing room. If you have a friend that sews, bless them. This, according to the directions, is like less than 30 minutes. I, um, it took me like maybe two or three minutes to cut it out the way that I wanted it. And it said you can make them round. You can make them oblong. You tweak this pattern to whatever your needs are. And I think that's sell for me. So I'm back up to the corner and I'm going to tuck it in, finger press it, and you're just going to make your corner just like you do when you're quilting. You want to make sure that you're hooking that paper now. So I'm going to just tack that paper down one more time just to make sure that it's hooked everywhere I need it to be. Is there, Is there a link for this free pattern? Um, I don't know. But um, what I can do is you measure your pressure, come back to the video and just watch the video. That's the best way I can tell you. Um, it's going to work great. And just pause the video. All you need to do is measure your presser foot, your um, pedal. You're going to go two inches wider and two inches longer than whatever you need. You're going to make it oblong or rounded. I chose to do the oblong because it. It's just, I thought it would look kind of cute when it's done. So I've got it all pinned in here and I've got my paper in here. So the mat's not going to hook on it. This will be really cute when you see the ending. So I'm up here now and I'm just going to start pulling these out and I'm going to slide it under. You're going to do this exactly like you would. You're going to take your presser foot all the way up, just as if you were binding a quilt. And it's not going to stick because you're, you've already got your paper underneath and it's just gonna be stinking adorable. Now you can use the stiletto there because it was pulling up just a tiny bit, but I'm just going slow and getting it in there. And I'm always looking for that next fun sew. Now here I will use the stiletto because it is popping up at this corner. And I just want to make sure I have it hooked in and slide it around and come right back down. And then you're going to wonder how this thing is going to keep everything from sliding. There's still one more part to be added. As soon as I get this in, I'll show it to you. I would have never known to put tearaway paper under when I'm working with this stuff. And I'm telling you what, it's a game changer because I always fuss when I'm working with shelf liner. And um, this was a good hack with it. I really like it. Back to the stiletto and slide around one more time. I'm coming up to my final corner and I wanna make sure it's in and press down with my stiletto. And I'm gonna pull this over just a tad bit. Lock it in and come down that last little nudge. And I'm going to snip all my extra string, flip it over, and I'm going to snip here. Now we're back to the fun part. I will um, look for the link again, but basically it's, you measure your presser foot. It's really simple. And you go two inches wide or two inches longer. You design it however you would like. Now this is where we're at so far. So I'm going to pull up my paper and there's one more final step. 
So let me get all of these clips up out of my way. Now there's, you've already measured, you've already got your pad made per se. You've got one little piece of batting and you're gonna lay this dead center at the end. You're gonna make a stopper now that's gonna go to the bottom of this. What you're gonna do is you're gonna just roll this up like a little sausage. And the fun part is it's gonna be cute. You can't go wrong with cute, right? And you're just gonna roll it up. No fuss, no muss. Now, how quick was that? You're gonna put a little pin in it. And this is where your 10 second sew comes in. All you're gonna do is make yourself a little, you're gonna go in under, and all you're gonna do is whip stitch this closed, but it's gonna be on the bottom and no one's gonna see it anyway but you're just gonna stitch it in so it doesn't move. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. No one's gonna see your stitch work at all. Now I had it tight enough to where I wanted it. And you can make them look like big operating room stitches or little tiny. Like I said, this is not anything fancy. On the bottom, it's never going to be seen. I don't think the um, foot pedal police is going to come out and say, I want to look under. And just all you're doing is making it so that it's going to fit snug here. And I'm doing them like an inch apart. All you're doing is getting it to hold. You're going to close off your stitch just like you normally would. And that's it. Now, how quick was that? I don't like my needles laying around, so I'm going to take a second and wrap it so I don't lose that one. Now, this is where the fun comes in. Now you've got your stopper. So you're going to lay your stopper right here. You're going to pick which side of your mat you want to use. You're going to lay this right here. And you're going to pin it. Whoops. I want to make it look cute, you know? All girls do, right? And a couple more clips for right here. And you're going to come over on this side and you're going to fold it under. And then you're going to clip that in. It's really important that you remember that you, you do not take your batting all the way to the side. It's going to mess you up if you do. I'm going to fold this under a little bit neater on this side. And you go an inch from the top. That way, it's just more decorative. Then you're going to stitch down both sides. So just lay it in here, slide it under, and drop it. Drop your needle. And I'm going to. Pull out another piece of this paper and slide it under because I could feel it catching soon as I put that presser foot down. And all you're going to do is lock this one in. So go slow. There's no race. And hold your fingers under here so that it'll pick up easy for you. And let the machine do the work. Back tack it in. And this side's done. That's simple. Turn it around and do the same thing over here. Lay it down and slide it. And all you're going to do is back tack it in just the same. This was a free pattern, as I said, on Facebook last night. And it's so fast, so easy, and so simple. And it has converted your foot chasing days over to where everything is simple now. Donna Dixon goes, great idea. I just threw a piece of that rubber stuff on the floor. Not cute, but it works. LOL, fun stuff. Absolutely. Now you've got your little pocket here just for decorative. You can do it however you would like. 
but I think it turned out really cute. Let me shut my machine off. And in a matter of 20 minutes, you're going to put this down on your floor. And this little stopper here is not, it's going to stop your pedal from going all over. Joe, can you go to the other camera? There. Your little stopper is going to keep your pedal as you're sewing. And then with this here on the bottom, your gripper, your pedal's not going anywhere. And I think that was cool. Cold over. Yeah, cold over there, Miss Courtney. Mm -hmm. So that was our little hack for the day. Um, I missed a few people as they were coming in. And for that, I'm sorry. I do want to circle back one last and final time today. The 12 days of quilt misinformation is rolling out. I'm lucky, thankful, and blessed to be one of the content creators that have been invited into this amazing opportunity. Greatness is coming the way of every channel, and we're spreading the love, spreading the news for all. So with that being said, if you want to be in the know, I'm going to drop some channel names. Courtney's going to be dropping some links, and it's going to be fun. The first channel that you're going to want to check out is check out Tracy over at the sewing channel. If you haven't heard of her, she's got tons of knowledge and greatness. She's going to be the first one out of the box December the 1st. In between now and then, you're going to want to check out her channel because she's putting up videos that are mind blowing and fun teasers. The next one is going to be Tiffany over at Tiffany's Quilting Life. She's got amazing content as well. And she's also in this great cell. The next one is going to be Kristen over at I See Stars. April over at April Stories. Becca over at So Becca. Die of Sister Chicks. Ian, the off kilter crafter. Chris at So the Distance. Fallon. The girl's got my heart over at So Be It Quilts. I'm telling you, she's got tons of knowledge and tons of greatness always rolling out over there. Then you got our channel. Then you have Teresa Louise, I Quilt Too. And we're going to wrap it up with Tucker over at Tucker's Quilting and Sewing. And I'm telling you what, the way this went is 12 content creators came together. We all mailed each other the ugliest fabric that we could find. Now, how cool is that? we got the opportunity to decide, are we going to make something cute or something ugly? No one knows what each other's doing. And that makes it a little bit more fun, but it has to be a quilt or a wall hanging or a lap quilt. And the measurements were there. So over the next two weeks, as we build up to December 1st, a lot of information is going to be coming out on all of these channels. You're going to see it on Instagram. You're going to see it on Twitter. You're going to see it on Facebook. You're going to see it here on YouTube. Make sure that you turn on your list and ears because there's a contest coming at the end. But you got to catch each and every video if you want to participate in that aspect. I'm not going to spill all of the tea today because i got cool videos coming out that's giving you more tidbits along the way. But make sure you check out all of these amazing content creators because I'm telling you what, they're all putting their hearts and souls into this project and you aren't going to be disappointed. So with that being said, remember, measure your presser, measure your foot pedal. You're going to go two inches wider, two inches longer. You need your piece of batting that needs to be four inches by the width. So no matter what, the batting's just going to be that little center section. That's going to give you that sausage look to make your little stopper. You make your presser pad, um, chaser, whatever you want to call it, however you want. But that little sausage at the top of it is what's going to keep you from sliding and chasing. And like I said, today's been a fun, easy So, Courtney, thank you so much, doll, for joining me, moderating for me today. I greatly appreciate it. You're welcome. So everyone, thank you for taking time out of your day and joining us today. God bless you and have a fabulous day. We'll talk to you again real soon.